a little bit on Elon Musk because I hate this uh, this mother effer. Um, mm-hmm. So last year in the spring, he uh, Elon Musk, the owner of Tesla, purchased many of the independent labs that were creating the hemp battery technology. Um, about a month following of his acquisitions of all of that technology, the inter- intellectual rights, Elon came out on his social media platforms, um, also YouTube. I, I think it was a YouTube video, to be real, um, uh, giving a public announcement that he doesn't believe the science around hemp and that it was being overplayed and the technology is not where it needs to be currently. Um, there's there's a little truth within that in which the storage capacity of hemp batteries is in my opinion, not where it needed to be two years ago when I got introduced to the actual capacitors. Mm -hmm. Yet technology nowadays, which allows us to uh, build and store energy from breaking, allows the hemp batteries to actually be fully functional and be integrated into our system. Now, Roger asked me to come on your show specifically to talk about Elon Musk. Um, yeah. I, I'm here to say F Musk, F him, F him, F the colonizer. I can't believe anybody believes this man. He got his wealth inherited from slave labor over in Africa. Why do yeah. we put stock in this man? Yes, hemp batteries are real. They utilize hemp plant based fibers, which are processed into carbon nano sheets serving as super capacitors. These batteries off, offer rapid charge and discharge cycles and present a sustainable alternative to traditional lithium batteries. In the early uh, 2010s, researchers began to explore hemp potential in energy storage. And what they found was nothing short of revolutionary. In the inner ballpark of the hemp plant is also known as a blast fiber, which was discovered to have properties conductive to acting as a super capacitor. Super capacitors are like energy storage gold. And I just want to go into that a little bit. So like I like I said earlier in the show, I went to this hemp conference. It was uh, put on by Miss Winona LaDuke. Uh, she ran for vice president back in 96 and uh, 2000 with uh, Ralph Nader. She owns mm-hmm. her own hemp uh, farm. I believe it's Winona Hemp. And uh, she helped facilitate this hemp conference. And she uh, she brought in this, this laboratory that she, um, through her, her organizing and through her work, she helped fund um, that created these hemp super capacitors. And like we just talked about, it's fully made out of hemp except for one component and that's the outer shell of, of the capacitor. And that could be made out of um, aluminum, which JB, I, I don't know if you know this, but aluminum is very, very, very recyclable. So we can recycle that easily. The inside of the, the capacitor itself has that that uh, carbon filament that we were talking about just a moment ago. And then inside the carbon filament is a hemp biogel. And all of that together allows storage of electricity. And if you don't know what a capacitor is, it's used in all of our technology from your cell phones, your remotes, to your cars, everything. It's more prevalent in our technology than actual batteries themselves. So when I'm talking about how revolutionary this this is, this is super revolutionary that we could replace all of our technology that has capacitors and batteries with a hemp-made alternative. Wow. Bam, I know. And so like these super capacitors, if you actually want to think about what it is, so what it does is think of a pitcher, a a water pitcher, filling up with the hose and it's dripping down, right? And it keeps a constant flow once that pitcher is full. So if you get a sudden burst of water, that flow coming out is still a constant. That's what our capacitors do. 
they make sure that the electricity within your power lines don't fry out your electronics within your house. So you have capacitors which are called breakers and that can get replaced with hemp. That helps all of our technology. And then when you blow up that super capacitor into an industrial size level, we're talking about the size of a small house. And these capacitors are used to manage the electricity flow within our large uh, manufacturing facilities and also our heavy uh, buildings that require a lot of electric uh, input. Um, the Tesla factories, the Amazon factories, all of these huge factories all require these super capacitors that can be replaced with these hemp uh capacitors and hemp batteries wow. in short it's energy gold the secret sauce of hemp batteries lie in that blast fiber and here's just that breakdown because I, I i know jb i told you i'm not that science person to tell you all that the chemical makeup and everything but here's just the base of it process yeah. processing the blast fibers the raw hemp fibers undergo a process to extract and refine the innermost part resulting in a material that's almost pure cellulose converting that uh converting it to carbon nanosheets the cellulose is then subject subjugated to a high temperature treatment converting it into carbon nanosheets these nanosheets act as super capacitors um the role of a super capacitor uh unlike traditional batteries that produce and store energy through chemical reactions supercapacitors store energy physically which allows a rapid discharge and discharge cycles integrating it into batteries these carbon nanosheets derived from hemp can be replaced traditionally and often more expensive materials in batteries like graphite or graphene Performance wise, while the hemp batteries are still under research and development, as you can tell in what's coming next, but primarily results indicate that their potential is to outperform standard batteries in the terms of both charging and storage capacity. The beauty of hemp lies in the fusion of nature and technology. I can't wait. So, um, Oh, I, I just had something that I was just going to say. What was it? Uh, um. But this is this is uh, interesting, especially in regards to, you know, uh, the, as opposed to a lot of what we're now thinking about lithium ion batteries. Um, one of the things that I was thinking about uh, and we brought up Elon Musk. I don't know if you remember, but uh, in regards to Bolivia, he said, we'll coo whoever we want, deal mm -hmm. with it. Yeah, I mean, he's a colonizer. I actually, I, I do truly remember him saying that and man's a disgusting person. Yeah. I mean, but it goes along the same with like the Koch brothers who actually helped implement the coup in, coup in Venezuela. And that was yeah. over oil. That... Of course. And this, uh, dare I say, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but if we were to allow the research and, and production of hemp in these different ways, this would literally kill the war profiteering industry. Oh, for sure. Because a lot of our wars are based off of minerals and, min and mineral extraction. So when you re replace all those minerals with something a farmer can grow i mean then we we can make that here at home we don't have to go across the globe and be the you know the colonizers of the globe we don't have to go extort extract do slave labor you know there'll be less fighting because the resource is so abundant and it's sustainable it's renewable mm -hmm. so we wouldn't have a scarcity once all of these minerals are up you know mm -hmm. we look at our oil markets right now and a lot of what we're doing over in ukraine and what we're doing um well it's part of what we're doing in palestine um yeah. has to do with oil 
the the oil of uh, the tran or what is the the power of Siberian pipelines and the the two pipelines that uh, Biden blew up along with the oil that's found on the coast uh, in the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. And we know that Israel wants to tap that oil in the Red Sea, which they have to get to it, which is Gaza. You have to go through Gaza to get to it. And that's yeah. part of the reason why they acerbated and put their plan into fruition quicker than what it had been doing in the past. Well, let's not also forget about the, the LNG, the liquefied natural gas that's under Gaza as well. Mm -hmm. That, that is huge gas reserves. And then on top of that, they want to build the Ben-Gurion Canal through Gaza so that they can have a canal that uh, actually competes with the canal in Egypt. Uh, so they want to do that as well. And really, uh, all, ultimately, this all goes back to money. They want to be able to make as much money as they possibly can through having these industries go through their canal instead of the Suez Canal. So that's also another point too. Uh -huh. Well, let's yeah. go on talking about those rich people and let's talk about a little bit on Elon Musk because I hate this this mother effer. Um, mm -hmm. So last year in the spring, he uh, Elon Musk, the owner of Tesla, purchased many of the independent labs that were creating the hemp battery technology. Um, about a month following of his acquisitions of all of that technology, the intellectual rights. Elon came out on his social media platforms, um, also YouTube. I, I think it was a YouTube video to be real. Um, uh, giving a public announcement that he doesn't believe the science around hemp and that it was being overplayed and the technology is not where it needs to be currently. Um, there's, there's a little truth within that in which the storage capacity of hemp batteries is, in my opinion, not where it needed to be two years ago when I got introduced to the actual capacitors. Mm -hmm. Yet technology nowadays, which allows us to store, uh, build and store energy from breaking, allows the hemp batteries to actually be fully functional and be integrated into our system. You look at his Tesla cars, I, I hesitate to even call them electric vehicles or EV vehicles because they're more of a um, luxury vehicles than actually on the market um, energy, uh, excuse me, electric vehicles. And mm -hmm. the means that he uses to create his vehicles, as we just covered through this whole presentation, it has a lot to do with slave labor, extortion, and extraction of indigenous lands. Yeah, especially um, the lithium mines in places like Bolivia too, because those lithium mines and the, and the lithium mines in other countries as well, you know, that's being extracted, you know, from, from them. Uh, and a lot of times it's cheaper, nearly free, you know, with slave labor in order to extract that lithium so that they can operate it in, within those, those uh, EVs as well. Mm -hmm. And just like the lithium mines, the cobalt mines and, and the other minerals that are used to create these hemp batteries, they use a process of acid baths to help process the minerals. And it, it, I, I should have put, uh, put a picture of one of the pools. Those are so disgusting to see. They are the size of a football stadium full of acid and chemicals to strip away other minerals from the ores that they're they're extracting out of the congo and the these pools are seeping into the land around it into the water source around it and that water source you know just like the the water source over here in minnesota around the mines they're all contaminated and it's contaminating our food that grows in the water over there and the, around the water over there also. Wow. Yeah. So, um, I... so much is going on so much. Elon Musk also owns a share of the Rio Tinto mines up here in Northern Minnesota. 
he is not my favorite person in the world. Later on last year um, and going into this year, Musk has indicated his interest in purchasing not not hemp stuff because he already purchased all that. He's interested in person, purchasing lithium ion battery manufacturing facilities. It, given their their 70% reduced battery or 70% reduced lithium within those batteries, but it still requires the same amount of cobalt, still requires the same amount of other materials that go in there. And lithium, just like cobalt, just like um, the other materials, they're all being extracted from the Congo and across the globe, as you saw in those maps. Um, this month, or no, excuse me, uh, Microsoft announced in January that it has collaborated with U.S. national laboratories to develop this groundbreaking technology. And to me, it, it's only taking the direction of hemp batteries and shelving that project and prolonging that slave labor, labor and the extortion of the Congo, of the Minnesota Anishinaabe, the uh, Wisconsin Anishinaabe, and uh, the Michigan Anishinaabe. Um, the Anishinaabe is my clan, my, my nation that I'm a, I'm a part of, and there is a mine here in Minnesota, and there is also a mine over in uh, Michigan that Rio Tinto is tapping in for these electric vehicles. In conclusion, um, we need to move over to um, hemp batteries. We need to move over to hemp. And anyone who is interested in finding out what are the false solutions that these rich colonizers are giving us on the climate and how to debunk them? I, I want to suggest everyone go get your free copy of Hoodwink in the Hot House. It's at climatefalsesolutions.org. It is a booklet. It's roughly 37 pages, maybe 38 pages long, that describes all of the false solutions that are being currently presented to us by the climate movement and the people that organize and control our climate NGOs. And I had this brief conversation with JB before we went on air and I told him as an indigenous person, it is hard to work within these white NGOs because a lot of times they expect you to be blonde hair, blue eyed and talk a certain way. But when you look at the bulk of the climate base, we are indigenous BIPOC individuals that are trying to protect our communities from these extraction co um, companies and, that are destroying not just the environment of the earth, but our local community and our environment within our community. When I talk about like the mine over in Minnesota, it's destroying the water where the wild rice, which is a cultural staple for my community, grows on. It, it's doing that all across the globe and we need to prevent it. So folks, take a moment, check out Hoodwink in the Hot House. JB, that ends my presentation on hemp. It was a good one. Thank you so very much for watching my channel and I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfond. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much. And you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. Forehead kisses and have a beautiful day.